The Lost Carnival, Season 2, Prologue. It's hard to believe, but nearly a year's gone by since I last had any dealings with Popu Ingenu and her carnival family. Their fortunes were restored once they managed to retrieve the magic phoenix purloined from them by their arch rivals, the Bird family. The whole thing took over my life for a while. And looking back, it's actually quite hard to work out how much of it could possibly have been real. The last time I saw them, the Ingenues were putting on their wonderful reunion performance. It was like seeing a strange world from a time and a place beyond your reckoning being unpacked from old suitcases and chests, and then unfolded in front of you and magically kissed back into blistering life. It was intoxicating, too much so perhaps. And since then, I've tried to get things back to normal, making my radio programmes, and for the most part, pretending it never happened. After all, this story made its mark on me in ways I don't like to remember. Arthur! She's got a gun! You've chosen the wrong side, Arthur. Such a pity. I rather like you. But then I get a letter through the post with a key in it. A key to the locker at a railway station. This railway station, in fact. And if I'm right, here we go, this is the locker. And uh, inside the locker is a letter. A very fancy letter, in fact, with a, a wax seal on it. And my name on the front, Arthur Bird, in the loveliest handwriting. Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. Dear Arthur, it says, I trust you are well. My name is Sergi, leader of the Bird family. Please find enclosed a first-class plane ticket leaving tomorrow and taking you to New York. I can assure you it will be a very comfortable flight. They have those new bed things, I understand. And the story that I will tell you when you arrive will, if nothing else, show you that there are two sides to this story. So far yours has been a very partial encounter with the truth of this tale. You have reason to doubt me, I am sure, but perhaps your curiosity will be piqued by the photograph I also enclose. Here it is, black and white, and two young children. Hang on, let's see what the letter says. It's of myself, as a young man, and the girl next to me, holding my hand, you might recognise a very young Papu Anjanu. So much for lifelong enemies, eh? Please do take the trouble to visit. I know your schedule is free this week, and I also know that what counts most of all in life is family. Blood, Arthur. Blood. And our blood, as you know too well, is shared. There aren't enough oceans or skies or continents in the world to run away from your bloodline, from who you are. You are a bird too. You're going to have to look deep within Arthur and decide one way or the other which side you're on. So, what should I do? What would you do? <laughs> the sensible thing would be to put the letter back in the locker and pretend I'd never seen it. But sensible, as they say, is for the birds. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to begin our descent to JFK Airport. Local time in New York is 6pm and the temperature is 8 degrees centigrade. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and 
until the captain turns off the button seatbelt sign. This will indicate that we are parked at the gate.